Grab a cup, settle in, and turn it up. It's time for a couple of drips. Coffee, conversation, and occasional quips. Here's your host, Chris Granger. Hello, and welcome to another installment of A Couple of Drips. It's a really meta episode today because we've got another podcaster on with us. Without further ado, I shall introduce the great Jan Siri. Hello, Jan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm very good, thank you. (laughs) So, Jan, uh, I haven't seen you for such a long time. It has been a long time. How many years has it been? nine ten years i mean you've got a grown child now it's yeah. probably been a while and i think we've probably seen each other between that kind of just fleeting. but it's it's been a long time hasn't it so how do we first meet Anne? you were going out with my wife's friend at the time yeah that's right and then, um, must have been yeah must have been at a social event wasn't it yeah and then, something like because i've been with yeah back now 16 years so. i remember i i took photos at your wedding you did, it was yeah. very that's very nice occasion this yeah. year yeah. Um, God, I'm old. Um, I've got a, I've got a 15 year old son. I've been married for. You see, that terrifies me because at the wedding he he was tiny. He was. Yeah. But I mean, you haven't changed, so you know you're oh, still. Oh, thanks very young. much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've aged horribly. I think I've swelled a little. Yeah, me too. I, I wouldn't say you've that's aged. That's Just though, you've got a, You've got a beard now, so I can't really tell. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. I'm, but uh, I, I grow out the wrinkles. <laughs> so Jan, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, we'll move on to why you're here in a minute, but what, what, what do you do for a living? Um, so my job's actually kind of cool. It wasn't before. Um, I've recently changed jobs, so I'll tell you what it is. Before, I was a chat host on a bingo site. So I used to basically, it was like MSN. I'd talk to the players and stuff. Without mentioning a name, I think you used to work for the big company in Newcastle. Is that, is yeah, that that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I worked for them, and then I was doing live shows for them, so sort of like game shows, and yeah. um, I could get away with whatever I wanted to because I'd been there for that long, <laughs> and the players <laughs> nice. liked me, so I could insult them and be grumpy. Yeah, yeah. And it was ace, but then... Dream job. <laughs> it was, but then the hardest part of that job was figuring out what i was going to watch on tv while doing it oh, okay. so i was like i need something else so now i am brain a, freeze kind of thing yeah, yeah it was sort of like i know a lot about ghosts now because i've watched a lot of ghost adventures Ooh. while doing it but now i am a responsible gaming executive which basically means Ooh. we work with people who try to stop people getting a gambling problem oh okay. so yeah if they've spent so much they'll come through to us we'll call them set limits for him right. we'll also build up case files on people okay because we have to you know sort of watch out for anti-money laundering and different oh, things wow. like that so you know you have to investigate people yeah. and it make you have to think with this job yeah so it's yeah. good so the days go quicker and you know how like it sounds really cheesy but when you're finished work and you're like oh that was a day at work yes yeah totally it's just sort of yeah. that satisfying I've done a good job today. Yeah, job well done. I'm going to yeah. go sit down. Yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah. I've never had that before. There's a lot to be said for that, I must admit. In my job, I do get that thing where it's kind of non-stop, like a, a locomotive during the day, but then when you finish, you do kind of feel a job well done. You know? Yeah, you can Some days. Be, there, some, are, there are other days. Oh, yeah, you know? like other yeah. days you come home and you're like, I hate my job, I hate my life. Definitely. The online gaming thing is not why we've... Um, not why we've got you here. Why have we got you? You run a little podcast, I believe. Tell us what it's called. I'll put a description in the episode blurb anyway, but uh, yeah, tell us um, all about it. So we are a podcast slash video cast on YouTube. Mm. We are called Enter the Dark. Um, basically, it's me and my hetero life mate, Les. Um, we cover true crime and cases. Some you've heard of, some you haven't. There is dark humour in it. So if you... I'm not saying easily offended, but if you don't like people, not we don't make fun of the victims. I'll I'll just put that there. But yeah. most serial killers or killers are absolute dweebs. So like BTK, he was he wrote terrible poetry. Bind torture kill. Yeah, uh, Dennis Rader. Uh, we've Dennis actually Rader, wrote, we've yeah. actually wrote to him and said we were. <laughs> Way. <laughs> we've said, oh yeah, we're in a um, poetry group called Mm -hmm. um, Enter the Dark, and we would love for your poetry, because we can see, like, you know, basically we blew smoke up his arse and said, write us a poem called Enter the Dark. We haven't got anything back yet, but... Wow, that's interesting. But, like, his major poem was, Oh, Annie, why didn't you appear? 
So we make fun of them in the situations yeah, and stuff. In, in the way that Manson thought he was the world's greatest songwriter, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know sort I mean? of like, it's just, we just, we can't help being, not be serious about things. I've we got do. a Manson record, it's not good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look at your game, girl, was all right. Mm, and mm. Um, the one that the Beach Boys stole. Yeah, that, that yeah. is a good song, actually. It is, yeah. 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 Was it Cease to Resist? Something like that. You know, Manson wanted to kill the yeah. drummer from the Beach Boys. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he did move into his house and take it over, and apparently yeah. he got the clap from some of the girls. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. There was a podcast I was listening to a while ago, which told, which did a two episode story about Manson, and I can't for the life of me remember what it is. But if I remember it, I will put it in the <laughs> episode description and put that there. Just um, say the name of your podcast again. Enter the dog. I mean, this is dead posh. This. I mean. <laughs> No, you can't see this, right? But we're in a room and there's technology everywhere. We've got decent mics. When I go to Leslie's house, we go to his room and it's just, we've put foam up on boards next to us on a table that we have to carry upstairs. And he lives in a terry style, so, you know, with the steep stairs. Yeah, this is like heaven to me. It's like, God, you got a computer in here. I take my laptop and set it up and then we have to put stuff down. It's amazing. So this, this is like me being in like Hollywood. I'm like going go back now and go, oh, fucking my podcast sucks. Look at this. Listen to this. I'm just obsessed with audio. Yeah. I mean I am too, but yeah. you know, my yeah. my wife says, No, you can't buy that. <laughs> I was like looking at it like handheld digit audio recorder because I was They're like, great. I've got a little Zoom H eight. Yeah, because yeah, I was like it's amazing. Because we've got ideas where we're doing sketches um, going to have like an, I'll go on to it later, but yeah. an ongoing series, yeah, which is more of a comedy series. Mm. And I was like, I need the audio to be good because don't care yeah. about the video. The yeah. audio has needs to yeah. be perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I was looking at this and I was like, it's only like 70 something. And my wife just looked at me and was like, no. And that was the same <laughs> tone of voice. We've just been on holiday and I was in an antique shop and there was a super eight camera for 10 pounds. And I was like, I'm going to buy that. She went, where are you getting film from? What are you going to film on it? Where are you going to... Oh, then, I was just don't like, get down the rabbit hole of the retro video gear, I tell you. Yeah. I know. Um, our mutual friend, Mick. Yeah, yeah old he, Mick. Yeah. He um, keeps saying to me, like, you could do this. I've got this. a cine film projector and he's got his eye on it, you know. I know. Right? <laughs> I mean, Mick's house, you go back and it's in the 1970s. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like big TV and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, brilliant. Now, just going back to the HA, I got one for my girlfriend is a documentary filmmaker. She's uh, doing a PhD in documentary. Well, she just finished a PhD in documentary oh, nice. film. But we needed something decent to record and portable to record the audio on, so I bought it for that. But then the HA has got like a podcast mode it's got a field recorder mode it's got a music mode with a guitar tuner on it and all sorts but what i've been using it for recently when she lets me borrow it is i'm doing some special episodes for the members only area on the podcast site and because it's so portable i grab a couple of these mics on a couple of desktop stands and just go around people's houses because it doesn't have to be the audio quality of the main show because it's just a yeah. members only kind of extra sort of thing. But you still get very, very high quality from it, you know, still nice. record everything at 2448 for the geeks out there. Well, before it goes cold, let's do the coffee. Oh, yeah. All together now. One, two, three, Ah, uh, coffee time. You see that? You're there, like, creating all this, like, art, and I'm there going on YouTube, like, royalty-free music. I mean, yeah, I've wasted my B-Tech and popular music and recording techniques, haven't I? Yeah, well, not really. Cheers. Let's, Cheers. Uh, right. Yeah. So... <laughs> that was that that was the death of the couple of drips cops you heard yeah. there. So what are we drinking? Uh, I Jan? am drinking coffee, which is called <clears throat> I'll do my best voice here. <clears throat> this is from Packed Coffee, which you can get. Are they sponsoring you yet? 
No. You're right, packed oh. coffee, sort Pack, yourselves out. On. Chris drinks more coffee than is humanly possible, so sort out. You get a good sponsorship here. That is true. This is why we don't have sponsors, you see. Because I just go, give me money. Uh, give Chris money. Uh, Pat Coffee, this is a Karango, and this is from the Democratic Republic... Democratic. Mm. Democratic Republic of the Congo. Do you find that anywhere that calls itself democratic is usually not very democratic? Yeah. They might yeah. just really like... Um, yeah. It's from the Congo. We've got a despot leader. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, it is democratic... Or, it's or it's a democratic want, coffee, yeah. Yeah, we don't want the death squad sent around. Um, apparently, there's, it's grown by Karango Mini Washing Station. Oh, nice. So nice. It's a laundrette who we're growing coffee on the sides. <laughs> it's better than drugs, anyway. And, if um, I could just tell the listeners that a washing station is where they prepare coffee. They take the... They hose the... Um, Why don't they just call it a coffee preparation? Well, they hose the... Uh, they wash the... Because um, it's a cherry, they wash the skin off. Ah. So they call it a washing station. Like in Gold Rush, where they've got a wash plant. Like how they recover the meat for Donny Kebabs. Yeah, yeah. High-pressure hoses. I went to a kebab shop once, and I went there quite regularly because I lived near it. Oh, yeah. After six months, mm. I ordered a kebab, and the bloke went, yeah. And the guy went to the meat, he went, no, 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 use the good meat for him. Oh. And he went in the back and got me meat. So I think this meat was Alsatian or better. Um, <laughs> but the, apparently this coffee has hints of blackcurrant and apricot. Are you getting that? So uh, well, thank I mean, you for that. If, if you would like to give it a, a loud slurp and spray spray it all over your taste buds. smelling it first, yeah. like it's wine. Right. Well, it is the wine of Araby, mm. as they mm. call it. Actually, yeah. I'm getting a lot of apricot. Oh, good. I am as well, which is surprising because I had a croissant for breakfast with apricot jam. So you would think my mouth was all apricotted mm. no, out. I but can... um, yeah. Not much blackcurrant, but a lot of apricot. There is apricot in there. Yeah, so I agree. Do you like it? I do. Yeah. I'm not, I don't drink much coffee because if I drink coffee, because I've give up drinking. Yeah. You've give up drinking? I've give up drinking. I've got a fatty liver. So, because my body doesn't dispel iron, it just keeps it in. So I have, oh, to have right. blood drawn off me. Iron Man. I, li- I can get a thing called Iron Fist. Literally, how cool is that? That is amazing. Iron Man. Nice. <laughs> just wanted to do that. Sorry. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if I drink coffee, I'm like, I need to drink all of this coffee now and yeah. forever. I I have to be sparingly with it. It's my new whiskey. God, you're more addicted than me in that saying something. I know, yeah. yeah. I've got an, wow. It's like an addictive personality. It's the ADHD brain. I'm like, I like this. And then my brain's like, <laughs> have all of it forever. Oh, that's fair enough. That's yeah. fair. I can't argue but with that. Yeah, it's, nice it's very coffee. nice, actually. This is on their uh, top tier subscription, which is ten ninety five a month. And you get one of those bags a month. The top tier one is micro lots. So they go to individual farms and actually source it from the individual farms and they pay the farmers like 180 pounds over them oh, 180 percent nice. over the market price i should say and so it they're rarer coffees but nevertheless still very yeah. nice plus i'm you know. now highly caffeinated and you're gonna ask me loads of questions so if anyone here has now gone on and gone oh i'll go and watch enter the dark or listen to enter the dark and then you're like god that guy talks a lot of shit you've heard nothing yet i'm caffeinated now great so uh, we like that one yeah then. i like this coffee there are literally billions and billions of podcasts out there so the chances of finding intelligent life amongst them are so infinitesimally small as to not even be worth looking could you then have stumbled onto the one podcast where intelligent life could exist no no you haven't so tell us a uh, <laughs> Danny Davis there doing a very good Brian Cox. I was not saying, is that Brian Cox? No, no, no. <laughs> So you it's get Danny him? Davis, who was on the very first episode, and he does a very good Brian Cox because he he used to do an impression of Brian as part of his stand up routine, a very rude routine that involves billions and billions of sperm. Well, I mean, it works in his stand. I'm not going to ruin his routine, but uh, if you ever get to see Danny Davis live, he's he's very very good. You finish your coffee. I good have, heavens, I've, man! I've, I've told you that. That's, that's it now. It's like crack that, to that's, me. <laughs> That's hard. I'm guarding my cup very carefully. So tell us a little bit more about the podcast. Where do you actually record it? Um, so we record it at Lazzy's house um, in his haunted bedroom 
and it's called a haunted bedroom because his first night there, he went into that bedroom and spent the night and he was sexually assaulted by a ghost. <laughs> um, I nearly choked. No, so basically what I, I'll go into the story. I mean, he's told everyone and, you know, um, you know, it's not <laughs> we're laughing at him, <laughs> not me. Absolutely. Basically, he was in bed and he'd moved into this house. You know, he split up with his girlfriend and stuff like yeah. that. So he was lying in bed and he felt someone just like cuddling from behind and he's half asleep. So he's like still thinking, oh, yeah. it's um, I can't even think. I won't say a name because I can't even remember it now. Um, what's her name? Kim, that's it. You know, it, it wasn't lot, worth the wait. It to wasn't. Be honest. Yeah. Lots, that's yeah. why I couldn't remember it. It's, you know, <laughs> you know, standard name. If yeah. anyone from Call Kim is listening, I do love your name. You're like Kim Gordon and Kim Deal, my two favorite Kims in the world. And basically, he was like, oh, "Okay," and felt it nuzzle in, and he was like, mm. "Oh yeah, I'm into this." So he turned around and he said there was this like hag staring at him. Wow. And he was like. Uh, and he tried moving, he couldn't, and he was holding him down. Wow. And then he screamed and it disappeared. And he had to go downstairs and sleep there. So we record it in that room because it's fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, why not? I mean, logical conclusion is this room is haunted by a rapist ghost. Let's record a podcast in there. Yeah. I, said, like yeah. I, I said to him, you know, beggars can't be choosers. No, absolutely. If, if a ghost wants to shag you, you might as well. <laughs> it worked for Ray in Ghostbusters. Mm. It did. He got a blowjob off that ghost. <laughs> I think I'm misremembering Ghostbusters. Can't you remember when the ghost is over Ray and she undoes his trousers? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. got a blowjob off a ghost. Yeah, and yeah. he also shagged the goo in Ghostbusters 2. Yes, yeah, no, he did do that. that so. He did do that, yeah. Yeah, so we record in there and, like I said, it's just a normal bedroom, apart yeah. from rapist ghosts. It's like high ceilings. Your standard normal rapist ghost bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have to... Carry a little, like I said, carry that little table. We've got boards with cardboard and foam on so we can block the sound in and make it sound semi-professional. Yeah, trying to, like a like a duvet fort. It is, literally, it is like a little tent. Brilliant. With our um, blue Yeti mics. Not None of this yeah. road <laughs> stuff here. <laughs> Can't afford this. They don't sponsor me either. No, but if you do if you do want us to get road mics, if you go to www.patreon.com forward slash enter the dark, anything from a dollar up to fifty dollars, ten dollars or more, and you can recommend a case for us to cover, and you also get free stickers, mugs, and t shirts as well. So, you know, you get free shit. Brilliant. And I haven't limited in it because I don't know how to do it. So if you just keep giving us money, we'll keep sending you the same shirt. It's me and Les as Simpsons characters and it says the sick fucks. So there you go. Nice. Um, so that's where we record, and it's basically is. I'm missing a trick with t-shirts and Patreon, obviously. I mean, I mean they take. 11%. We've got a coffee page. We've got a KOFI page, and we've we've also got a membership tier on Acast. Yeah. What sort of topics have you covered in your uh, in your wonderful podcast? We started off doing little known ones like the Papin Sisters and Marcel Petitot. Oh, tell me a little bit about those because uh, I don't know. Uh, right, just so just give me a little bit of background. Papin Sisters were two sisters. Yeah. Who were made and for some reason they just snapped and killed the people the wife and the daughter who paid them they were in a lesbian relationship with each other mm. and different things it was a crazy episode and then marcel petio is the funniest guy he was like mr toad oh yeah he used to race around this town in his car knocking stuff down and blaming people he was became mayor of this town and then he was um, voted out because he was stealing electric and then he was a doctor as well. And he went to this town and was like, oh, yeah, all these other doctors, they're old. I'm new. I'm fancy. And that, But then in World War II, he started telling Jewish people he could get them out for 10,000 francs. Right. And all he did was just kill them. He went on the run, yes. was like disguised himself, became yeah. a police officer and was put in charge of finding himself. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was a dick. Then we've done, like, think people like Andre Chikatilo, Dennis Rader, BTK, Herb Mullen, Richard, what's his face, the vampire killer. And then loads, loads of things. We've done a few cults recently. And the next episode out will be on Jonestown because, you know, everyone loves Jonestown. Absolutely. Did you know they had a monkey at Jonestown? I did Mr. not Mr. Muggles. Know that. And we're doing a special Halloween episode coming up, which is going to be on the exorcism of... Of Annalise Michelle, only because I want to do stuff on ghosts and things, but yeah. I'm like, I need to stick with the crime thing. Do you think it's moving from a, a crime thing to a ghost thing, or, well, or do you think? Or, what was your original kind of remit? Was it 
just to do serial killers and crime or yeah it was sort of just to do anything because we got sick of as you'll know you go on and you want to watch true crime on youtube and yeah it's a person talking like this with ominous music in the background absolutely and they cut out loads of stuff like the gruesome bits yeah and i'm like what was the point in that you shouldn't do that. So we wanted it. Well, the worst is when it's a robot voice. Oh, oh. God. Um, yeah. <laughs> serial killer documentaries, massive thingy. All they do, right, yeah. is go on to the Wayback Machine yeah. and go on to crimelibrary.org, yeah. download it, and then yeah. read that. Then read That's that. literally yeah. all they do. Yeah. And the guys banned me from his channel because I kept saying to him, do you just do this all the time? And putting links into it going, here you go, you can read this here. And yeah. he, he's making bank off that. And I put time and effort into rewording things. What was the question? Uh, the question was, oh, yeah, what, was, was the, really? what was the original aim of the podcast? It was basically for us to put out something on true crime or any cases that we wanted to yep. with all the details and it'd be more of a conversation like me and you having now. So you yep. can sit down, yep. put it on, and it's like you're sitting around with your mates yep. having a conversation. And we'll have a laugh with it because there's certain things that you've got to laugh at. And everyone knows, you know, if you get dark humour, makes it a bit easier for you. Yeah, we definitely. may go a bit too far with the dark humour sometimes. Well, you know, it's we've got a very hardcore base of people who are very protective over us. Yeah. And the reason we're doing that one for Halloween is because it was the first trial of exorcism that got taken to court. Right. Because they th- like tried them for manslaughter because she ah, died. Okay. The film, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, have you yeah. seen it? Yeah, it's based yes, on that story. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing a video version of the podcast as well. Are yeah. You're just having like webcams going yeah, at the well, moment? Yeah, well, at first or? it was going to be a podcast. Mm. And then I went, hey, let's put it on YouTube. Yeah. And then caused myself a lot more work, which was just us yeah. talking like this, but with pictures yeah. over. And then, It's amazing, isn't it, though? It, 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 you know, you will get a very loyal following on podcasts, but if you want lots of viewers, YouTube. Yeah. Just, and, and even if you've got a podcast with just a still picture, you'll get more viewers on YouTube a lot it's quicker weird. than you will on the podcast thing, even though nothing's happening on the screen, you know? Yeah, it's I weird. think it's just the presence of YouTube. I think, I think. it's, with us, we, we changed the pictures over, so mm. it'd be like, oh, talk about a Belgian bun for some reason, so I put a picture of a Belgian bun up. and It's a beautiful confectionery with it, a cherry on the is. top. Even though my wife takes the cherry off. What? She, she does the same with cherry bakewells. I'm like, you, you Philistine. Ooh. Belgian bun, only second to the cinnamon swirl. I don't like cinnamon that much, mm. but my wife loves a cinnamon swirl. Mm. So, um, sounds rude, doesn't it? Grants for divorce there. Uh, oh, she loves a cinnamon swirl, doesn't it? I mean, that? she she likes a cinnamon swirl, you don't like cinnamon, and she takes the cherries off a Belgian bun. But when she does that, she does give I my daughter I think we need an intervention here. She gives my daughter the extra cherry. Oh, so. okay. Fair but um, weirdly... Um, I went to Waitrose for the first time in my life on Anglesey the other day. How very middle class of you. And I was like, oh, I better get some Belgian buns. It had load, like something went wrong in the machine. Wow. And there was loads of cherries on this one. And my daughter was like, this wow. is the greatest Belgian bun ever. So, yeah. A cherry bonanza. It was. But yeah, then we did a couple of episodes where it was just a face. He's like doing Q&As and thank yous. Yeah. And I wanted it to be more personal. So then we started filming on an old phone of mine. The picture quality was terrible. <laughs> so I brought a Razer camera. Um, oh, yeah, the the, the Razer Pro. Yeah, or yeah. which nice. um, if you're going to buy it, you need a mic. So now we've got it where we go small in the corner when we're telling the story oh, okay. with the picture still up. And I do pictures. Oh, that's, and, a, that's a nice idea. Yeah, yeah, just so we're still there and you yeah. can still see us. And um, I still do me pictures and paints yeah. of which... When we so go do you stream tangents. that live or do you edit it? No, or? I edit it. I've got Audacity I record on. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I'm um, old school. It's cool. If if you want to start a YouTube channel, all you need, literally, a decent mic. I got a blue snowball. Mm-hmm. It's 45 quid. If you want a better one, get a Yeti because they're like 90 quid and they're awesome. Audacity is free and just film already, get a free trial. And also I would recommend Orphonic because it's an online thing where you put your like, audio into it and it levels it all for you. Oh, very nice. Um, you get two it's hours like those online mastering services. Yeah, where so you, it's yeah. two hours free a month you get. Yeah. But I think I pay £7 a month and I get nine hours. So if I'm doing more and more yeah. stuff, 
I haven't got to be like, oh shit, I can't release something yeah. now. Just so you know, I can also do that kind of processing for you as well. Who can you? I can. I have facilities. Yeah, I'll so send it to you. If you, <laughs> by I'll all s- means, I've got mastering stuff here. So, I can. what what I'll do is I'll send you some audio and give like, can you make this sound actually good? Yeah, do that, and I'll have a go, and I'll send it you back. And if you like it, we can agree a <clears throat> a price. He just tapped his nose then, so. <laughs> So we've got an extract of the show, I yes, believe. We... Tell us what, what we're about to hear. Okay, so this is from our Alexander family cult murders. So basically, there was this family, they were in a cult, and their son Frank was the prophet of God, and he was sleeping with his mum and sisters, and this is where he's killing his mum, with a coat hanger. Now, I've cut out all the boring bits of Les telling us about how <laughs> coat hangers are put together because he used to yep. work in a clothes shop. Well, but it's good to know that that's the kind of thing we can expect from the episode. Yeah. yeah, and it does get gruesome, but it does end on the greatest harmonium impression you have ever heard. Brilliant. Let's let's give it a listen. They go, they go together like a jigsaw, so it doesn't split in half in Les, the way that it Les, gets splintered. Les, Les, you're a fucking nerd. Who cares? No one cares about how clothes hangers are put together. We're on about killing here. I'm just You're saying. A, I'm on about a man, a, a prophet of God and his father killing the mother with a coat hanger that they've both fucked. Right? They've both fucked this woman. Right? And you're like, oh, well, I think you'll find that a coat hanger goes together like a joke. No one gives a shit. Why couldn't they just smother her? It's the killing hour, Les. Don't question the prophet of God, Frank. Just get the pillow and stick it on her. Frank wanted a coat hanger. Well, Don't Frank, question Frank, prophet of God, hashtag prophet. Did they do all this to a uh, musical accompaniment? No. Actually, yeah, they actually did. <laughs> did they? <laughs> yeah. They moved into the other room. And be- <laughs> Listen, they moved into the other room and beat and mutilated Petra and Marina. That's not funny. At one point, Harold began to play the harmonium and recite psalms while his son inflicted brutal carnage on the body of family members using pruning shears, shoemaker blades, and a hammer. Go. Absolutely. (laughs) Brilliant. Brilliant. That's that's a brutal death. Ten minutes thought about well you know coat hangers and you know they do slot together and you don't use a plan and i'm like no one cares he's <laughs> he's a terrible human is les um but i love him and now you say you're recording in a bedroom but the audio quality i thought was was pretty good on there yeah that's why we're in a little tent little, little tent and um also been through orphanic because I did music at college. Right. It didn't pay off. But um I did music at college. Was that at Stoke on Trent College? Yeah it was J Block. Yeah did you do uh B Tech Music Technology or something. B Tech and Popular Music and Recording Techniques. I did that course years before you did it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was going to do the HND, but then I was like, no, I want to do film studies, sociology and psychology instead. Nice. Because, yeah. Who, who needs a career when you're 19? I tell that to my wife. But yeah. <laughs> she won't listen to this. So she won't listen to it. She, well, she listens to like the first five minutes of the podcast, so she could say she's been there and yeah. she's give us a view. Yeah. And puts a comment in to push up the algorithm. Yeah. Um, oh, algorithm. Um, but, oh, yeah. my girlfriend listens to it all and gives me notes. Oh, does she? Yeah. Uh, I thought the guest wasn't loud enough. Or just... <laughs> yeah. I mean, now she'll be like, well, he wouldn't shut the fuck up, Chris. No, not get him back here. Why did you give him coffee? Can he not speak without swearing? I can't. I mean, this no. is probably the most I mean, Is this why you had. get banned from YouTube and Facebook then? <sighs> YouTube is f- so frustrating. This is how ridiculous it is for small channels yeah. to get seen. In the first hour, they take the first hour of views I've had. So on average, we'll get like, say, 30, 40, 50 views. They'll be like, mm, that's not high enough. We're not going to push that in our algorithm. So yeah. that won't push it to people who subscribe to us as well. So there's little to no chance of us being discovered so we have to go out and market and I t- and they love it and i understand why youtube do that because they yeah. want people they they love money yeah and i would if i was youtube they'd want people like bailey and mr Ballin and all these people sure, to sure, bring sure. money in mm. but when you've got a small channel like us who are like we want to grow you know we want to do this and it's like yeah and all of our videos, they say, you're not suitable for all advertisers. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I don't care. Don't mm. give a shit. No, that's fair um, enough, yeah. But with Facebook, that's a lot different. They've banned us from advertising now 
this is the frustration I get with them. And I'm like, I really hope that that it's like, it won't be, but a yeah. video track, like what YouTube used to be, where you could come on and just do stuff. Yeah. And it'd be great. But I don't think they'll ever be that again. I mean, do you think it's the algorithms picking it up? Yeah. And... The, I mean, the algorithm's strange. It's a minefield of trying to figure out what you can say, what you can't say. And then yeah. YouTube will be like, every month, here's a list of the changes we've made. And they're just like different things. But then you have to ask them for all of the changes. And that's where I find out about it. Climb to fame. Climb to fame. It's your chance to drop a name. Trying to outdo each other's kind of line. Worn up and ship is the only aim. Claim to fame. Claim to fame. Claim to fame. Claim to fame. It's claim to fame time. <laughs> now, apart from being obviously an incredibly successful podcaster and YouTuber, what is your claim to fame, Ian? Oh, you're talking to me? Uh, yeah, I am. Oh, this is in two parts, but essentially, Tony Robinson hates me. Ooh. Oh, okay. I'm intrigued now. Right. So, this goes back to 1997, 1998. Time Team were in Burslem by us. Right. Okay. I was at college, the music college at the time, and we were walking into Beerslam to go to the pub. Yeah. Um, because we were students, and that's what you do. The time team was filming, and they were digging stuff up, and Tony Robinson was standing by the fence. <laughs> right. And all my mates just walked past. I'm like, right, Tony? I'm like, yeah, I was like, Tony Rob, this Baldrick here, you know. <laughs> it's like Maid Marion in a Merry Men. Brilliant. So I was like, you're right, Tony. And he went, yeah, mate, are you? And I went, yeah, not too bad. And how's it going? And he was like, oh, it's not too good. I was like, why? What's going on? And he went, well, it's raining. He's like, so we keep clearing out um, the mud. He goes, but it keeps pouring back in. He goes, and we're not getting as much done as we want to. And he's like, I'm not sure that we're going to find the original floor. He goes, but he's like, we think we we can do this. We're going to put a tent up. He's like, but I'm not sure what we're going to do. Yeah. And my mates looked at me and were like, no, no. And I was like, in my head, I went, he set me up. I have to do this. If I don't, I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I just went, don't worry, Tony. Sure, you've got a cunning plan. Oh! <laughs> and he looked at me and just went, oh, fuck's sake. And walked <laughs> off. He was obviously in a mood. And my mates were like, wow. And I was like, eh. a couple of years later, we'll move the story on. At least a bit you know, like Brit worst jobs in Britain or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And I was in Manchester and he was doing a book signing. And I was like, oh, right, I'll go and get the book because, you know, I yeah. like it. And I said to him, I was like, yeah. And he was like, you're right, mate. And I went, yeah. I was like, um, I think I do need to apologize, though. And he went, why? And I told him the story. And I went, and then he went, oh, it's okay. Don't worry. He's like, I have worse. He's like, and. You know, he goes, if if I was stuck in the rain in Stoke-on-Trent, I was probably in a bad mood. I went, yeah, no problem. And he wrote me a book. He went, see you later, Luke. And he went, don't forget, read your, look at your book. And I looked at it, he put, to Jan, I really hate you, Tony <laughs> Robinson. And he just smiled and waved. I was like, thank you. So, um, yeah, Tony Brilliant. Robinson hates me. Brilliant. Oh, that's awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice indeed. We like that. My wife hates that story. She's like, why did you say that to him? I'm like, because if you're there, yeah. like if Richard Wilson was there telling you something, yeah. and he was like, it's unbelievable. And he was like, do you believe that? You'd be like, <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> it's, if I hadn't done that, yeah. my life would have been incomplete. My children, my marriage. Yeah. Podcast, nothing. Well, I have a friend, Chris Stone, and he went to meet Steve Coogan oh, as nice. Alan Partridge, dressed as Alan Partridge, and did the accent at him and met him. And, and like Alan Part, well, Steve Coogan just thought this guy's an absolute nutter, but he went up doing the impression dressed as him. But just oh, amazing. brilliant to, to meet him for his book signing, which is absolute genius. I, I do think. keep saying to anything now, and I'll be like, oh, stop getting Bond wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone's like, what? I love that episode with uh, Spy Love Me. Yeah. It's like, everyone do that with your eye. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, what he does, a better bit of bush. Bit of bush. 
you've got a ship that can swallow submarines yeah. and you've got an underwater city come on and you've got the pyramids oh, i love alan partridge is one it doesn't get enough love i don't think no. just for stupid things like i've i've got my foot on a spike limb. and i'll do it glad the office me mate dan will walk down the office and i'll just go dan 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 he'll be looking at me like, dan you can't hear me <laughs> Okay, we've got a new section coming up now. Ooh. Actually, I think I might have done the section once, but we didn't have an ident, and we've now got an ident. Ooh, I get sloppy seconds, nice. <laughs> it's time for... Dream Podcast. It's time for Dream Podcast. It's like Rick Wakeman and Kraftwerk, really. I, do you know what? I, I was going for Kenny Everett, but I'll take that. <laughs> I can see the Kenny Everett in it. Yeah. Oh, it, was, it was done in the best possible taste. It, I can't get the rooms too We, we haven't got room. Yeah, yeah. It's dangerous. So Dream Podcast, if budget and time travel and things, everything was no limit, and you could hit, listen to a podcast between two or three people, what would be your dream podcast? Oh, I'm going to give two just because. Yeah, man, just go one. for it. So, yeah. One, Kurt Cobain. And you could ask him why his wife shot him. Yeah. I'd be like, Courtney, <laughs> really? Toby Vi- I was like, you know, Toby Vile from Bikini Kill, you were going out with her. But apparently, he was um, Christine Pfaff, who was the bass player in Howell. Right. He was in love with her because she was a great artist and she was sensitive. And uh, Courtney, you know. He's Chris- not sensitive. Yes. Christine just, you know. Yeah. Got shot up. Jan, Jan is doing a injecting yeah. your injecting, art, yeah, injecting sorry. your veins action so, there, just for listeners. Um, the rumours are that she killed Kristen Pfaff and then killed Kurt because mm. he was going to leave. With, and she was having an affair with Billy Corgan anyway. So anyway, um, yeah, Kurt what, be there. from B- Billy Corgan when from, Kurt, from, from Smashing Pumpkins? When Kurt took an overdose in Rome, right. she was on her way to London to meet Billy Corgan. Oh. Kurt found out and took an overdose and then she came back. Wow. And she's admitted the only time she ever thought about cheating on Kurt is when he took an overdose. Well, and now she's left with melancholy and the infinite sadness. He owns the NWA now, not the rap group, the right. wrestling. Oh, group. really? Yeah, yeah. Broke That's it. a weird move from Smashing Pumpkins to... Yeah, it is. But, wow, um, okay. Yeah, so Kurt Cobain would be there. Um, then I'd think I'd probably have... I'd have Henry Rollins just because oh, I like okay. Henry Rollins because not just for... Loves his vinyl. He does. Yeah. Um, not just because of his music. He's a great actor. He's yeah. a brilliant activist. He got like with, with them. Really inspiring as well when he talks about when he had no no job yeah. and no qualifications and, and how he decided one day that he was going to get out of oh, that. Oh, yeah. Kirk so so if you had Rollins and Cobain on a podcast, would it be a true crime thing or would it be... It'd be uh, just me talking about music and politics with him brilliant just that, that and then i'd listen to that the other one i'd have would be jesus stephen fry and richard dawkins oh that would be fun wouldn't it because i think stephen fry and jesus would get on fine and i think they'd all get on and it'd be really interesting and i just sit there going no way but yeah i think that'd be two good episodes that would probably get about 20 listens each i like that Okay, I've got one for you. Go on then. Make up the most annoying band in the world using four musicians. Most annoying band in the world using four musicians. Yeah. Okay, Bono. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Lars Um, Ulrich? Yes, go on, we'll have Lars. We've got to have Lars on drums. Fucking St. Angus snare sound. Yeah. Guitarist, who would be really annoying? Probably just for arrogance, Steve Vai. I was thinking Steve Vai. Yeah, because quite arrogant. And I'm sure he's not in real life. It's just his stage persona. Yeah. He's the least hated of those three musicians. And bass player, you'd want quite an obnoxious bass player, I think. I mean, so us bass want... players were usually pretty cool, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. I will yeah. let you have another guitarist if you want to. No, I'll go for it. Let me think of an arrogant bass player. It's, it's, I don't hate him. I just think if you, you, you need someone in there. So yeah. you'll probably have JG Burnell from The Stranglers. Nice. Uh, cause he's quite, you know, uh, oh, uh, oh no, no, no. Cause he's, he's too good. Uh, let's, uh, well, I'll throw in, uh, uh, Sid Vicious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there we go. I mean, that's style over 
yeah. substance all there. But yeah. my, my four would be Anthony Kiedis, John Frusciante, Flea and Chad Smith. That's quite mean, but funny. That's just the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. It's like Nick Cave said, he goes, every time I put the radio on and I think, what the hell is this shit on? He's like, and it's usually the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And you're not going to argue with Nick Cave. <laughs> My mate Nick, met Nick Cave in Slamwich and Hanley. Really? Yeah. He was standing there ordering a sandwich and Nick Cave come in and he went, he's like, excuse me, can you help? He's, he speaks like David Bowie now because I can't do an, oh, I could do an Australian. He'd be like, you're all right, mate. Could you tell me what sandwich is, uh, is good in here? And he went, you're Nick Cave? And he went, yeah, what sandwich is good? And he went, oh, the turkey club's really good. And then Nick Cave ordered that and he said it'll be 10 minutes. He went, I haven't got time and walked out. That's my mate meeting Nick Cave. He recommended a sandwich he didn't have time for. What a shame. It, you know, it's that's a metaphor for life, I feel. Yeah. Nick he Cave probably had a white wheeled limousine waiting for him. He had a van, apparently, and a big buzz. Yeah, but that's not one of his songs. Well, do you know where he went to? Where the wild roses grow? Oh. Uh-huh. Well, you got a lizard in here. Yeah. Nice pet lizard. Oh, uh, mate! Actually, I probably should have uh, probably should have gone for. I do like that. Yeah, that's been great. One final thing: I always ask this, my guests. A bit weird, and we haven't got an ident for it yet, but we're going to get an ident for it. Boxes or pounds? Boxes. <sighs> Boxes. I don't like justify. T- I don't like tight things around my crotch. Oh, you like? Um, my wife got me some boxer shorts from on that ass. And it's like got the free pair and they're really cool, mm. but they're like tight. Yeah. So it makes me look like I've got a big package. Right. But I'm like, I don't like the tightness because they ride up and then, you know, you start, they start cutting in. You here. like a spacious gusset. I do. And, you know, I like to, like my trousers yeah. are always quite big. Because you like I to like, dangle. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like freedom. And Liberation. When I had my vasectomy. I had to wear briefs. I had yeah. to wear three pairs of briefs. Ooh. It was the, the swelling. Wow. Oh, honestly. And it, as purple as that, everything went cock and balls. Really? Um, that, most painful thing ever. Uh, wife, that is, apparent, a, that is a brief encounter. Apparent, oh, apparently, according to my wife, it's not as painful as childbirth. And it probably isn't, but, you know, that happened. I had to wear three pairs of pants and um, I didn't like it. Wow. I also couldn't sit in an armchair. Because my legs wouldn't spread far enough because of the swelling. Well, so I had to sit on a sofa with That did spread. not go where I thought it was going, to be honest. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Jan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It has been amazing. And I will put all the links to all your fabulous podcasts and YouTube channels and everything. And the merch. In the episode description. It's been a pleasure. I hope you'll come on again at some point. Definitely. Um, I'll bring Les with me next time. Oh, do do bring Les. I'll set up an extra mic. And, and, um, we might be in the new building, by then because Ooh. we've got to move so uh, yeah, yeah. so you never Curse know you landlords oh i know um, but I know. yeah if you ever want to come on ours to when we're doing the garot phantom or anything and you want to do sketches with us and i would love to yeah and it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much thank- that's it for now thanks for listening if you are and don't forget if you want to follow us on ko-fi you can ko-fi.com forward slash couple of dreps And also, you can support us by clicking on the support button wherever you get your podcasts. And also, there will be extra membership bonuses, bonus episodes called Get a Drip going on there very soon where we look at some very expensive coffee. You showed me that coffee. It's very Everyone, Everyone send him some money because he needs to justify this coffee. I do. I need to pay for this coffee. This coffee costs more than my microphone. (laughs) Thank you so much, Jan. No problem. Thank and, you for having uh, me. Hope, hope to speak to you again. Cheers. I, hope I haven't annoyed everybody. Goodbye. I'm sure you haven't. <laughs> Cheers. You've been listening to a couple of drips. The show was conceived and presented by Chris Granger and is a Cup the Mic production. 